Pope Francis has released an updated version of his landmark legislation to counter clergy sexual abuse. Over the weekend, the Holy Father addressed the church's method for handling abuse done by lay leaders of international organizations recognized by the Vatican. The new guidelines reaffirm the commitment to investigating cases of misconduct and harassment. It also provides protection for potential whistleblowers. Joining us now from Rome is Andreas Tonhauser, EWT and Vatican Bureau Chief. Andreas, can you tell us something more about this decree? Sure, Mark. So, after four years, Pope Francis has now updated and confirmed the procedures to be employed when it comes to sexual abuse in the Church. In 2019, the Vatican motu proprio Vos Estes Lux Mundi was published on an, as they say, experimental basis. We're speaking here about a Church law, which is titled, You're the Light of the World. And this biblical verse has, of course, been chosen on purpose, because Pope Francis said that there is no room for tolerating crimes of abuse. And now this rule has been adopted, updated, and will take effect on April the 30th. And what does it actually say? Well, anyone has the obligation to report cases of abuse, including violence against vulnerable adults, as they're called, and not only against minors. And this refers to the abuse of religious women by clerics and cases of harassment of adult seminarians or novices by a superior. Those persons are dependent and, of course, cannot easily walk away from a situation of abuse, and it's therefore that they deserve explicit protection. The most recent allegations of this kind, just to give you an example, were brought up against Father Marco Ivan Rubnik, a Jesuit priest and also a world-famous artist, actually. Accusations here included claims of spiritual, psychological and sexual abuse, and Rubnik is now prohibited from any public ministerial and sacramental activity. And he's required also to stay in the vicinity of Rome. Mm. Well, tell us a little bit more about these new church norms and why they were only introduced on an experiential basis up until now. Well, the procedures introduced in 2019 aimed at holding especially leadership accountable. No one in a position of power should be able to deny responsibility. So the motu proprio is quite far-reaching. Therefore, almost four years were given to solicit feedback from bishops around the world. And one of the adaptions, for example, is to better protect the good name of a person involved in an accusation. There were quite a few prominent cases in the past where reputations and names were destroyed because of abuse allegations that turned out to be false. The late Cardinal George Bell is only one sad example. Now, dioceses, also, dioceses must also operate an office where abuse reports can be filed easily. And the rules include protections for people who witness acts of abuse in addition to those who submit reports of alleged abuse. No obligation of silence may be imposed on them. Andreas, obviously the abuses are a terrible and sad topic, but it seems that the church is making progress. Would you say that? Uh, sure, Mark. There, there is clear progress. Uh, this weekend we have also witnessed, for example, a very high-ranking bishop in Germany stepping down amidst strong allegations of abuse cover-ups. Pope Francis accepted the resignation of Bishop Franz Josef Bode. He had played a key role in the German synodal path, but had come under immense pressure for his handling of abuse cases in his diocese of Osnabrück. And also other bishops have come under pressure who did not play a good role, um, especially also in Germany. Um, two of them who are involved also in the, in the synodal path. Now we've just learned that, um, that they also make uh, big considerations regarding these new rules that are now coming into effect. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this important update. Andreas Tonhauser, EWT and Vatican Bureau Chief, thank you.